American Girl 10, Chapter 1, Lost in the Music. My left hand shifted down the neck of my guitar, fingers pressing into the frets to form chords, while my right hand sailed over the strings with my favorite pick. I knew every note of April Springs. I didn't have to look at my sheet music or think about how to play the song. I just let go and played, feeling the music as if it was flowing out of my heart. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Dad waving me down from a few feet away. Startled, I clamped my hand over my guitar's neck, muting its sound mid-chord. It took me a moment to realize I didn't hear the buzzy twang of Dad's bass guitar. I glanced around. The rest of our band wasn't playing either. Sorry, I said, feeling my cheeks turn hot pink. No worries, Dad said, winking. I know you love that one, and you were singing with so much heart that it nearly broke mine to stop you. I blushed. When I play a song I love, it's easy for me to get swept up and forget about everything but the music. April Springs has a slow, sad melody that fills me with warmth every time we rehearse it. And when I sing its romantic lyrics, I can't help daydreaming about what the songwriter must have been feeling when she composed them. That transition out of the chorus still sounds a bit rocky, Dad said to the band. Let's try it again. Our lead singer, Jessie, wrinkled her nose at him. Come on, Ray, this is the fifth time we've gone over the chorus. Let's just move on to the next song. My 17-year-old brother, Mason, rolled his eyes from behind his drum kit. Mason isn't Jessie's biggest fan. He thinks she's stuck up because she never helps unpack gear at our shows. Also, she only drinks bottled water from France, even though the tap water is perfectly fine here in Nashville, Tennessee. Despite all that, I couldn't help but admire her. Jessie definitely had what it took to be a lead singer for a band. She had a great voice, she loved performing, and she was happiest when she was the center of attention. Every time I watched her perform, I wondered, could that be me someday? Let's try the chorus once more, Dad replied calmly. We haven't practiced in ages, and with our next show around the corner, I want to make sure we have this down. Jessie pouted, but she knew she couldn't say no because the Tri-Stars were dad's band. The Tri-Stars used to be a family band, but when mom quit to start her own food truck business, dad invited Jessie to join us as the lead singer. I wish we got to perform at the big stages around Nashville, like the Ryman Auditorium or the Grand Ole Opry, but we mostly just play weekend gigs around our neighborhood. Even so, we have a few fans, that is if you count my little sister and my best friend. Jessie sighed. Let's get on with it then. She counted off and the four of us launched into April Springs again. Last April, the rains came down, sang Jesse, and washed away your love. Dad and I joined in, harmonizing on the next line. Last April, the rains came down and washed away my pride. When I lost your heart in that rainstorm, I think I nearly died. Jesse pushed her microphone away and looked over her shoulder at me. Tenny son, your vocals need to blend more, she hissed. Jessie always uses my full name when she bosses me around. Usually I like having a unique name, but the way Jessie says it always makes my temper rise into my throat. I'm doing my best, I said to her. I like singing harmonies, but when I'm singing low notes, my voice loses some of its smoothness and gets a grainy edge. Mom says that's what makes my voice unique. When you're singing back up, though, you're not supposed to sound unique. You're supposed to sound invisible. It's boiling in here, Jessie said curtly. I need a break. Without waiting for my dad's reaction, she stepped off the edge of the stage and slipped out the front door. Dad frowned. I'll go turn up the AC, he said, heading to the storeroom at the back of the shop where we rehearse. We never seem to be able to get through an entire rehearsal without Jesse getting upset, and this time it was my fault. Mason slung an arm around my shoulder. Don't let Jesse get to you, he said. She's not happy unless she's complaining about something. I thought you sounded great, didn't she, Waylon? Waylon, our golden retriever, perked up. He's named after one of Dad's favorite singers, the outlaw Waylon Jennings, and he definitely lived up to the name when he was a puppy. He always used to break the rules, like escaping from the backyard and chewing up our shoes. Maybe the Tri-Stars should try playing some of your songs, Mason suggested, nudging me with his drumstick. Remember that one you wrote about Waylon? Oh, Waylon, Waylon. He's a real sweet pooch, he crooned. I sang the next line. Long as you make sure he's not on the loose. Waylon, we harmonized. Waylon howled along. I laughed. I don't think these lyrics are ready for an audience yet. Come on, it's a good song, Mason said. It's just okay, I said. I'm 12 now, but I've been writing songs since I was 10. Waylon's song was the first one I ever shared with my family. 
I was really proud of it back then. Now, though, the words seem sort of cheesy. I've gotten better since I wrote that one. I said, yeah, Mason said, you should play me something. I hesitated. I've been working on a few songs lately, but none of them were quite ready for anyone's ears but mine. I need to finish some lyrics first, I said. Suit yourself. Want to help me catch up on inventory while we wait for Jesse? We always hold TriStar rehearsals at my dad's music shop, Grant's Music and Collectibles. My parents have owned the store since I was little, so for me, it's the next best thing to home. Mason and I don't officially work there, but we all help out when we can. I followed Mason into the storeroom. It's packed with shipping boxes and instruments that need repairing. Dad was at his desk writing trash on a piece of paper that he had taped to a sagging black amplifier. Wow, Mason said. Is that a Skyrocket 3000? Dad nodded. A guy dropped it off for recycling yesterday. Apparently, it's broken. No way, said Mason. You want it, Dad asked. Mason nodded eagerly, his eyes so wide that you'd think he just won a free car. My brother loves rewiring musical gear. Our garage is full of half-fixed amplifiers and soundboards that he's determined to repair. Great, we'll bring it home to the workshop after rehearsal, Dad said. Mason craned his neck to peek out the window. I'm not sure we're getting back to rehearsal anytime soon, he said. Jesse's still on the phone. I groaned. Dad gave my shoulder a little squeeze. Tenny, I know you're excited to practice, but Jessie's got a lot of solo shows coming up and she's a little stressed out. So let's just give her another few minutes here. I know Jess was busy, but it was hard to be patient. I've been looking forward to band rehearsal all week. If I could, I'd play music every waking minute. Fine, I said after a moment. I'll go work on some of my own songs. Good idea, Dad said, ruffling my hair. I ducked out of the storeroom and returned to the small stage at the front of the store. Dad lets customers use the stage to test out microphones, amplifiers, and instruments. And it doubles as the TriStar's rehearsal space. I slung my guitar over my shoulder and adjusted Jesse's microphone to my height, looking out at the empty store. Waylon was curled up by the vintage cash register watching me. For a moment, I imagined myself on a real stage in front of thousands of people about to perform a song I'd written. This next one goes out to Waylon, I said into the microphone. I picked out the chords of the tune I'd been working on. The melody comes easy to me, but it takes me a long time to find the right lyrics to match. I hadn't figured out words to the song yet, so I just hummed the melody while I played. As the song's energy rose and washed over me, I filled the empty room with music. The song ended and I opened my eyes. Waylon was asleep, which made me laugh. Jesse was still on the phone outside. Everything looked the same, but somehow I felt stronger inside. Playing music always made me feel like that. But performing my own songs for people, letting them feel what I felt through the music, that was my biggest dream. Jessie came through the door and tucked her cell phone into her pocket. Okay, she said. Go get your dad and brother and let's get this rehearsal over with. I snarled and let my fingers ripple down my guitar's six strings, sending up a wave of notes. Jessie doesn't know how good she has it singing lead, I thought. I hopped off the stage and headed toward the storeroom. Maybe I should ask dad to let me perform one of my songs with the TriStars, I thought. But I knew that he would only agree if he thought the song was great. And that meant not playing it for him until I was sure it was ready.